Okay, so now we know what is transaction input and what is transaction output and how they are related. In previous chapters, uh, I have explained transactions using various diagrams. If you go to any website which shows you Bitcoin transactions, it will show you in the format which is pleasing to your eyes. For example, Blockchain Explorer. Here it is showing you this transaction with the transaction ID this. It is showing that in this transaction, a transaction output of 3.23122704 Bitcoin was spent to create two new transactions, one with a value of 3.09591965 Bitcoin and other with a value of 0.13528139 Bitcoin. Now, as you can guess, this is not how transactions are stored internally. Internally, these transactions are transmitted across the network in the form of byte stream. If you want to see these raw transactions in hexadecimal form, you can use Bitcoin API. There are online tools available which you can use to execute Bitcoin commands and see the output. One such tool is chainquery.com which I am using. I want to see how the transaction looks like for this transaction ID. So copy this ID and execute get raw transaction command. You get the following result. Pretty ugly, isn't it? What you see on Blockchain Explorer is actually derived from this data and presented to you in a format which is easy to read and understand. So let us dissect this transaction and understand its anatomy. But first thing first, this is a hexadecimal string, which means a set of two numbers or characters make one byte. So the first byte is this 02, which tells you the version of Bitcoin block. And then this is the count of input transactions. In our case, it is one. So as you can see here, first five bytes are not real transactions. They are some meta information. After that starts the real transactions. So in the input transactions, first 32 byte is the pointer to the output transaction which was spent. Only caveat here is that this is in reverse byte order, which means you will have to read it in the reverse order one byte at a time to get the transaction ID that it is pointing to. Next four byte is the output index. If you recall, we discussed in the chapter of transaction that merely transaction ID is not sufficient because the transaction ID can have more than one uh, transaction outputs. So you need to have output index number to point to the exact transaction output. Next one byte gives you the length of unlocking script. In this case, it is 6B, which means 107 in decimal, which means that next 107 bytes is the unlocking script. After that remaining four byte is the sequence number. Don't worry about sequence number because I have not covered it yet. So this whole thing is the input transaction. After that next one byte is the count of subsequent output transactions, which is two in this case, zero two. So this whole thing are output transactions. And as I said, it has two output transactions. So let us see the first output transaction. In output transaction, first eight bytes is the Bitcoin value in Satoshi's and that too in little Indian format. So if you want to know the Bitcoin value, you first reverse it one byte at a time and then convert it in decimal, you get values in Satoshi's. And then you divide it by 10 raised to the power eight to get the Bitcoin value. Next one byte, which is one nine, is the length of locking script, um, which means 25 in decimal. Uh, which means that next 25 bytes are the locking script. After that, the second output transaction starts with the Bitcoin value in Satoshi's in little Indian format and then locking script length followed by actual locking script. So this is the format of transactions in which it is transmitted over the network. We have already defined transaction as the transfer of Bitcoin from one address to other address. But as you can see, in the original transaction, which is serialized on the block, there is no sender address, there is no receiver address, there is no Bitcoin value which is spent, there is no mention of any account balance. All these constructs are derived from this transaction and shown at the higher level for ease of understanding. In previous chapter and in this chapter, we have covered transaction input in details and we know that transaction input contains unlocking script. This unlocking script is nothing but the combination of public key and digital signature. We have covered a lot about public key earlier, but what is digital signature? How do you compare digital signature with our familiar pen and paper signature? How digital signature is created and how it is used for verification? Some of the most interesting topics will be covered in next chapter. 
stay tuned if you now want to move to the next chapter you can click on this card and yes don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon because so many interesting videos are on the way for easy navigation to all chapters visit mycodecoffee.com thank you so much for watching